Ah, I've managed to find a little spot there. Interesting enough that female, when she gets a bit close, I'll try and get a photograph of her as well. I can't say I remember her specifically from before. I think it's a female, it looked like one. She turns just now, we'll see a bit better again, but she's got those uneven tusks. Pretty perfect ears, so it's a combination. That's again an easy way to ID her, but also what's interesting is that secretion. See, just between the... Sorry, just something on the radio. Just that secretion between the eye and the ear. It often shows you a bit of stress. Maybe there was a bit of stress in the group earlier. She might be the matriarch even of this group. She's quite big. She would be probably 50 years, 45 years old. Gavit Pidavis. Actually, it looks like Tim Shlamis. I'm with another group uh, just further sort of southeast from them along the same Scovenu. She's coming out. Let's try and get a photograph of her. Elephants always, for especially for ID photographs, to try and get them as the ears are open it's because then you can see both the ears as well as the tusks as well so for a frontal view easy to recognize them in future but those uneven tusks obviously wait to see who she might be quite a big female like i said age wise she's up there already but also physically very healthy looking nice and bulky Also nice and calm which is great the rest of the herd see them moving through the undergrowth there now as is typical they've adopted the attitude and the sort of the feeling and the sense of the of the matriarchs and the rest of them also very calm moving nice and slow very tranquil feeling in the herd some other herds you get and there's a lot of movement and play and noise or sometimes even aggression even within the herd so not only does it influence how the herd behaves towards humans or cars but it also behaves or influences how they behave within the group itself. Big breeding out of the matriarch and eventually the herd got big enough that they split into two groups. And this is quite common. One of our oldest daughters would then be the matriarch of the next group. And those groups might quite often band up together again. So there's still a close relation even between different herds that hang out with each other. I know there's also been some studies done mainly in the Okavango Delta that I've read about and, and in East Africa as well showing that you get quite large of elephant during the night often. I guess that would also have to do with your density of predators and other threats. Uh, thanks Ailey, just reminding me of a question. Emma from the UK, nice to have you asking questions again join us quite often on drive just a question about elephants little guys using their trunks I will try and have a look at those two small ones again if we can catch up with the front end of this herd but uh, they use their trunks from just after birth essentially for breathing first and foremost the nose but the ability to to manipulate it to bend it and twist it and do all the different things they do eventually with it when they're adults develops over time so from the first day they start learning and how to use it they start learning coordination they start getting the muscles stronger and more more coordinated but they don't really do much with it in terms of feeding or drinking water or anything like that for the first few months even suckling from the mum they use the mouth and then only as they get older that by watching the adults and learning from observing and learning obviously from playing around and you can imagine if you're walking around you've got this floppy thing hanging in front of you you're going to try and figure out what it can do as soon as so it's something that they sort of ease into over the, f over the first few months typically sort of the first four six weeks it's almost useless it just flops around apart from obviously breathing 
and then as time goes by they start learning how to manipulate it and bend it and smell move it around pick up things until eventually when they're adults is an incredible tool I mean really is amazing how dexterous the trunk can be and what they can do with it so everything from picking up small little fruits to pulling over big trees Let's see if we can catch up with the front end and maybe have a look at some of those little ones Like I said, while we were driving there, all the BSR sometimes referred to as the clowns of the bush. I think what that might have been is it was a few bachelor males playing around with each other and then getting sort of moved along or intimidated by the big dominant bull that's normally around here. And he's got some females as well further back. I'm amazed that some of these females don't have little lambs running around yet. They are literally ready to burst. <laughs> One of them enjoying, really enjoying the marula leaves. It's actually a branch that's been pulled down by an elephant you can't see it at the top now but an elephant must have snapped in the last day or two maybe yesterday when they moved through here <clears throat> and that's what quite often happens by elephants pushing a tree over or snapping a branch they won't necessarily eat all of it but in the way they make that food available for other animals so in this case the impalas can now enjoy those fresh leaves previously too high for them to reach now it's just an easy picking See those females, that one on the left hand side there, they went busy browsing. Very good example of a very, very large belly. There's a fully developed impala lamb in there. If it was to be born right now, it'll be able to stand up within seconds, minutes at the most. Be able to run around, smell, see, hear, do everything as a fully developed adult could. A little bit wobbly in the early stages normally, but nonetheless, it's still amazing. <laughs> 